Okay, hello everyone. How are you? This is K. So today is the 8th of July 2023 on Saturday. So happy weekend to you. And uh, I hope you're having a great weekend. So today the markets are closed. So I usually do some psychology or uh, money management topics on Saturdays. But today, I will be reviewing my trades in the month of June, last month. And uh, I will share the spreadsheet and how it was. So before I move on, let me just um, ask you one question. One is, how was your trade for performance in the month of June? How was it for you? Was it a profitable win or lose or break even or perhaps no trace? And the second question is, are you journaling your trace? Do you journal your trace? Is the second question. In fact, I actually uh, created a post uh, here on the, my YouTube channel under community here. And um, I have uh, 292 votes and I asked how was the trade performance in the month of July, uh, sorry, in the month of June. And win 26%, break even 16%, lost 37%, no trade 22%. So this means that um, win and break even are more than the loss which is good news. So looks like um, as long as you follow my st style or Ichimoku strategies or trend follow strategies, then I can see that uh, win and break even uh, slightly more than the loss. And no trades, that's fine. But um, there were so many big trends in the month of June and this month, in the month of July, the market may be quiet. So if you didn't take any trades, I'm sure there are some reasons, but um, I recommend you to check at least once per day. And um, without you taking trades, I ask you to keep updated on what's happening among the markets. I think that's important in terms of the mindset, because let's say if you uh, if you are away from the charts for, let's say, uh, four days or five days per week, then you come back charts next week and you have no idea what was happening for the last one week. And you may get lost, you may, you may lose a sense of the trades and also analysis. And that's why at least I recommend you to check chart at least once per day. Only take one, once, only take like a few minutes to check charts and that's it. But this makes a huge difference uh, in your performance. So no trade is okay, but I hope you also um, analyzed the charts. Okay, so how was your performance in the month of June? Was it win or break even or lose? And also, do you journal your trades? I put the question on the chat here on the uh, on the live stream so you can also respond to that so i thought it's nice instead of uh, me talking you know one way if i get some stats also then um, i know how you're doing on your performance and also your psychology is behind okay so uh, let me say hi quickly before I start. All right. Hello, I mean, good to see you. Yeah, this is the performance. Um, I talk about my performance in June on this live stream today. So please uh, looking forward to it. Okay. All right. Reza, good to see you. Thanks very much. Sean, thanks for joining too. Kevin, good to see you. And Matt Maniac, good to see you too. All right. Jen, good to see you. Appalachian, thanks for joining also, to see you. 
Okay, uh, Christopher also good to see you. He says it was profitable, but I risked a lot before my loss turned into profits. Not good, but I am trying to change my habit. Okay, so you're risking a lot. Maybe uh, that was because you wanted to make profits quicker or maybe you wanted to cover the losses. But uh, if you risk too much, then on the hindsight, uh, you may lose big also. So I recommend everybody to fix the percentage for the losses every time you enter trades. So I think that was a good lesson. I'm sure that was a good lesson for everyone too. If you don't calculate the risk per trade, you should do it in the month of July. That's some areas for your improvement. Okay, Roge, good to see you. Hinata, thank you for joining. And one, good to see you too. All right, Rosie, thank you for joining. Happy weekend also. Okay, Maximoku says, Hi Kay, have you ever thought of prop firms to increase your earnings using prop firm capital? Um, I have more capitals than I use in prop firms, so that's why I don't use. And also, um, I don't want to trade with somebody else's money. Uh, because I have enough fund, if I knew prop firms uh, when I started, then maybe I tried, but uh, I didn't. Because the prop firm challenge is not that famous in Japan when I started, so I didn't know, I simply, uh, I have been trading with my own money. But um, I think that's a good idea also. Some of my students have passed some challenges like FTMO or 5 percenters. So uh, yeah, I think that's a good way to get funded first. And if you have enough returns, then you can open your own account and start trade on your own. Okay, hello James, good to see you. Thank you for joining. Emperor, good to see you too, all right. Came here to say hi, thank you very much. I hope you have a great weekend too. Okay, Riyadh, good to see you. Ahmed, thank you for joining. Anil, Ali, Vic, good to see you. India Patriot, good to see you too, all right. Roge says, I was profitable. Uh, last month and also the months before that. I've, I'm forever in debt to you, of course, for teaching me the ropes for the last three years. Oh, that's great. That's great to hear. You have been improving and um, being profitable for the last months. So that's nice. You have been profitable for two months. So let's see if you can continue for the half a year. If you have been profitable, at least non-losing for the half a year, then you should be good. So uh, don't be confident just because you win for a one month or two months. Uh, because the market may be just right to you. But the real question is when the market is not really trending or when the market's still spiky, but still can you make some profits is a question or can you do the proper risk management and psychology management when the markets range like um, this week the markets were ranging and we had lots of big news uh, like uh, um, FOMC and also uh, non-farm payrolls and other big news among the countries and we had some retracement on JPI pairs and uh, yeah, less trends this week. So this is, I think, what's important is uh, whether you can be patient whenever you don't see any opportunities, you, whether you can stay away and be patient and not to take trades. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see some comments. So let me, let me check first and then come to my performance. Okay, all right, you're welcome. Thank you very much. All right, hello, good to see you. Thank you for joining. Emperor says, before I leave, I want to mention that I had a losing, long losing streak in June because I was taking low quality trades and I was definitely over trading. 
Okay, okay. So I think that's a good thing that you know the reason so that you know what to do in the month of July. If you thought that you overtraded, you overtraded and you took too many trades every day, then you do the opposite. Don't take trades every day and put that on your rule and then practice that in the month of July and see how it goes. You know, whenever you lose, um, I think that it's not about the strategy, but it's more about psychology. Um, psychology, uh, you know, oftentimes uh, makes you lose. So that means if you do the opposite, then you may be able to win trades. And opposite does not mean the direction of the market. Let's say you buy and buy and buy, and you lose three times, and you may sell next time. But that's not, a, not, that's not what I mean. You do the opposite in terms of your trading habits. Then you may see some light in the future. Okay, Pearl Ring, good to see you. Thank you for joining. All right. Nathaniel says, uh, please help me. I answer this question. How, you, how to uh, separate your screen the daily time frame and M5 time frame. Oh, in trading view, you can actually um, click on the split window and it becomes possible. It's really easy. Just one click, two clicks, and you split the windows on trading view. Okay, all right. That will be the daily time frame. Daily will be the best. But personally, I don't trade options, so I'm not sure. Okay, Binak, good to see you. Okay, I was able to recover to break even because I started taking high quality setups only and stopped over trading. That's good. That's good. Okay, okay. Roger, you're welcome and thanks for joining. Okay, so now let me share my performance in the month of June here. So this is the spreadsheet. So every time I take trades, entries, and exits, I track my record on the spreadsheet. And this way, I can not only uh, look at the numbers, some important numbers, but also I can see the patterns of the losses and the wins, and also patterns of, um, patterns of the pairs I'm trading, and also the patterns of the times that I have been trading in throughout the month because it varies in some months i have been trading um, new york sessions and in other months i was trading uh, london sessions in other months i was trading asian sessions mostly so the patterns uh, do uh, change among the markets um, throughout the month so to know that to find to see the patterns uh, it's also effective. So, um, yeah, so here is a spreadsheet and simply speaking, the return was 11.2%. So in average, I have a return of 10% per month. So 11.2 was a bit higher uh, than usual. And my win rate was 44.4% which is, I think, a bit higher. Usually, my win rate is between 30 to 40 percent, so 44 percent of win rate was a bit higher. And so I took, I took um, nine trays. I took nine trays, and um, out of nine trays, I, I mean nine trays and 18 positions. Every time I enter trades, I take two positions. So you see JPY, I take two positions. In ADJPY, I take two positions. So nine trades and 18 positions. So among these positions, winning was eight and loss was six. Hold on. Well, wow, there is a, like a, I think the airplane or something was very close to this building. 
Sometimes it happens. Maybe they are doing some event or something. One day, there was a jet going through very close to the window. And that was very, very, yeah, that was a very exciting and kind of scary at the same time. <laughs> if, if the airplane just bumps in, that will be very dangerous. But uh, anyways, sorry. Okay, so uh, yeah, so out of uh, 18 positions in the month of June, I had 8 winning positions and 6 losing positions and 4 break-even positions. And uh, to get to there more detailed, um, my max stop loss I took was 43 pips. So usually I take the stop losses between 20 to 40 pips ideally, but if it's reasonable, I go more for the stop loss. Maybe go up to 50 pips. If I go, let's say 60 or I would say 70 pips would be too big for the stop loss. So the maximum stop loss I took throughout the month of June was 43 pips. And in average, I put the stop losses 31 pips. So this is a bit higher than the other months. Usually, average stop loss for me is like 25, like 20s. So um, if it's 31 pips, then that means the market was very volatile in low time frames. So that's why I had to take bigger stop losses. So that's something I can tell by looking at my average stop loss per trade. So, and also my max drawdown per trade per position was 0.66%. So that was still very low. So I usually take risk 2%. Risk 2% is my rule. And like I mentioned, I take two positions. So risk 2%, and if I take two positions, then that will be 1% one, 1 times 2. 1% 1 uh, risk to stop loss times 2. So no matter what, how many pips I take for the stop loss, every time, whether it's a 20 pips or 31 pips or 43 pips, um, no matter how big the stop loss pips will be, I always risk 1% of what I have to the stop loss. So that's a risk management, 1% and times 2. So I take 2 positions times 2 and that's how I get the drawdown. So the max drawdown per trade was 0.66. So that means times 2 would be 1.32%, uh, right? So still below 2%. So that means every time I enter trace and exit my trace, I exit before the price hit the stop loss. And you can tell from the drawdown percentage like this. So the drawdowns have to be kept small so that in future profits can cover your losses is my strategy. And that's something you can find it here. And also, um, you have to check this number too, the profit factor. Do you know how the profit factor is calculated? If you know, then please let me know by typing. Yeah, the profit factor should be above 3 on the live trade. Yeah? It should be 3 or above on the live trade. If you backtest, then I, su I suggest you to have 3 to 5 profit factor. Then in reality, in the live markets, you may have around 3 profit factor. But mine on the month of June was 6.45, which was pretty great. So I'm pretty happy with this result on the profit factor here. Okay, so... Since I don't see any answers, let me just tell you what the profit factor means. Profit factor is um, the it's calculated by the profit divided by loss. 
profit divided by loss is the profit factor. So that means if I if I win hundred dollars and if I lose ten dollars, then profit factor is ten. Yeah. So it's a profit over loss ratio is the profit factor. And this is in average. So that means every time I risk, let's say uh, one. Let's say every time I risk $10, then I win $64.5 is the performance. Okay, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Lakshmi, that's right. Yes. Total profits divided by the total losses. That's right. Yeah, so loss, profit and loss ratio. So um, yeah, so this this number is something I really look at. This is the most important number on my strategy. This performance should be above three as a trend follower. So that should be one of your goals if you are the trend follower too. So. 6.45 is really great. Usually my PF is around 3 to 4, so this is nice, nicer than other months. And my max profit I got was 136.4 pips on one of these trades, and my max loss I had was 16 pips, 16 pips. And my average profit pips was 27 and my average loss pips was minus 5. So this is also important. You also look at the ratio of profit and the losses in terms of pips too. We tend to focus in numbers of money or how much, but we also have to focus on the profit and loss in terms of pips. How many pips you have been gaining in average and how many losses you have been losing in average. And this ratio is called R multiple. And R multiple is another important number that I focus here. And that was 5.55. So risk in the reward ratio in terms of pips was 5.5. And risk in the real ratio in terms of money was 6.4. So that was my performance. And as a result, I got 11.2% return. So far, so good. So when you join your trace, uh, you have to see these numbers too. Uh, you can actually get the performance from the broker or maybe the platform. You can download the spreadsheet and look at your numbers. So every month, you have to do it. I used not to do this every month when I first started my trading journey because all I care was whether I make profits or not. If don't, then I never look back my trades, I never look at these numbers, but numbers do talk, and numbers are always accurate. But our emotion is not accurate. It actually fluctuates. But numbers do not fluctuate. They are fixed and they are logical. So there must be something to learn from your numbers too. So yeah, so that's actually um, what I do here. Okay, so um, let me look into some of my first best trade. Which one I took? Uh, 136 pips of profit, and that was on um, that was on here pound JPY. I took the trade on pound JPY on the 17th of June, and um, so again I take two positions per trade, and one of these positions I fix a profit of 68 pips. In other position, I take the profit of uh, 136.4 pips. 
So both were within trace, but the why the pips gaining pips is different is because I trial in different time frames, in different timings. So let's say the market goes up and up, and it retraces, and I trial and trial the profit. Let's say I bought here, I buy, and as the market goes up, I trial, and let's say if the market retrace, I exit simply. So this is my profit take profit strategy. I don't usually set the TP, which is I think unique of my strategy, but I trial the profits. And when the market starts to consolidate, I look for an exit timing too. But in this particular trade, um, the market retraced once and hit my stop loss. And that was uh, 68 pips of profit. So this was one of my profits here. So I exited on one of my trades, but still there is there is one another stop loss. So I take two stop losses. So one of the stop losses was here, and other stop loss was down here. So even once taken, there is still one alive. And after the market was taken, the stop loss it took off this way again. So I trialed again. I moved this stop loss to here and eventually fix the profit. So this is my second time. This is how I took 136 pips of profit here. So this is my take profit strategy. So the most important is not to lose first. Not to lose, risk management becomes important. And then if you master the risk management, and this is the next step. Okay, so let me show you my screenshot of my trade on Pound JPY. Okay, so Pound JPY, let me see where it was. Okay, so this is the screenshot. Hold on, let me open it bigger. So this is my entry. And I put my stop loss here. So after my entry, the market went up towards my direction. And when I confirm that the market is going towards my direction, then I move the stop losses to break even. So that's first thing I do. And then I monitor the chart. Then I see this there is an end wave. And the market has been nicely bullish towards my direction continuously. So this is when I moved one of the stop losses here. So I have two stop losses again. Two positions and two stop losses. So one of the stop losses, I moved it to here. So I mark stop loss one. And the second stop loss, I still keep it on break even. So this is stop loss number two. So here, one of the stop losses taken here, and this is how I got 68 pips of profit. Okay, so this is one of my exit timing. But there was still another stop loss alive on the break even. And as I monitored, the market went up again. So I trailed the profits. And when I saw this uh, new breakout up here, then I moved this stop loss to here, to the blue line over here, so like this. And then there was a big news here, and there's a long week. So this week actually took my position, and that's how I got 136 pips of profit up here. And that's why I have two different exit timings and two different take profit timings like this way. So if, you, if I had only one position and one stop loss, then here it would be taken, I exit, and 
I wasn't able to capture the next breakout and these big pips. But because I have two stop losses and I trial in two different time frames, that's why I can make more profits by having two stop losses like this way. And this is part of my take profit strategy. I used to have only one stop loss, and if it if one's taken, then I look for the new entry chance, which is okay. But uh, you know, time efficiency is one of the most important things for me. So if I'm take if one of the positions were taken here, I mean if I only only had one stop loss, and if I take profit here, then I have to spend another time to do to do analysis on the charts and to look for an entry chance and to monitor to sit break even in trial and it takes time it may take another one hour two hours of time but if i still have my other stop loss alive then without taking other one hour two hours this one makes another profit so that's what i mean by time efficiency Yeah, instead of redoing all the analysis and risk another 2%, in this way, you don't risk another 2% because your stop loss is already above your entry. So even if the market goes down, you it hits a break even, but you don't lose. So this is one of my most important risk management, the break even timing. But um, again, I don't risk to make profits on the second position, second stop loss. And this is a part also of the risk management. So it's, uh, it's really important here. Okay, so let me check some comments. Let me see. Uh, do you trade at all this week? No. I didn't have any trades this week. This week the market was choppy, so no trades. Okay, India Patriot says my entry is right, but stop loss hitting my um, stop loss more time, but market is my favor direction. I think your stop loss is too tight. You have to be, have a bigger stop loss to uh, to follow the trend. Okay, Reza says, trading is exactly like the example you gave, choosing a C, knowing a wave, riding it at the right time, and getting off at the end. Let's not forget that a C is not always calm. Yeah, that's right, that's right. We have to wait for the next waves to come. And based on your strategy, you know which waves to capture. You can't take all the waves because our personality is different, our time zone is different, our strategy is different. So don't try to capture all the waves. Just capture at the right wave for you. Okay, Vishal, you're welcome. All right, HSA, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Okay. Um, Excel file, yeah, this spreadsheet is shared among my communities. So this is for training purpose. I have been using a spreadsheet, but it wasn't this beautiful. But uh, I hand out on one of my communities, KTS Academy or GTS communities. Okay, let's see. Dear K, when we have a resistance in the daily time frame, do we have to wait until until it's broken with a strong candle in the daily, or can we trade after the resistance is broken with one hour candlestick? Uh, it depends on which resistance it is, which time frame the resistance it is. If it's a daily resistance, then you have to wait for the daily to close. If it's one hour resistance, then wait for the one hour candle to close. So it depends on a time frame you are watching for the resistance. Aranya says, when you trade it always when uh, the market breaks, is it not possible to trade earlier? 
Oh, in this example, I didn't trade at the breakout. This was before the breakout happened, and then I anticipated the breakout, and it happened. So, my trade is not always at the breakout. Okay, Lakshmi says, do you continuously track until break even and then leave the chart or track all the way to the end? Um, I track until break even mostly and then leave chart. Yeah, I don't monitor all the way to the end. It may take for, you know, a couple of hours and I don't want to do that. Okay. Sion says, uh, what time frame is that Bollinger Band trade taken on K? This is five minute time frame. This screenshot is five minute. Okay. All right. JD says, uh, do you or in your community look at indices? Yes, we do. Yeah, we do look at indices and Bitcoin, and gold, and Forex. And as per request, I check any markets. Okay, so that was my trade on Pan JPY, which was my best trade in the month of June. So now let me introduce one of my losing trades. Uh, so what time is it now? It's uh, 37. So let me introduce my one of my losing trades. So uh, let's see. I, I had some losses on Cat JPY. My first trade was loss, minus 15 pips, and the second trade ADJPY was also a loss, minus 7 pips, and my third trade on ADJPY was break even. So let me introduce uh, Cat JPY, the first trade I took here. So so that you know how I lose correctly at the right timings. So that losses can be the part of the process to win profits in the long run. Um, okay, let's see. Cat JPY. Is uh, okay. This one, yes. So, I took the trade here um, on the fifth of June at seven o five UTC, and this was my entry confirmation. I got a, a nice uptrend from the daily, and also from the one hour, and I remember that there was also four hour. And M30 all trending up. So that was strong and stable uptrend. And M30 broke the resistance. Sorry, one hour broke the resistance. So that was a nice confirmation too. And then the market was moving up. And uh, this is a bit tricky, to be honest. The market was very spiky and high up. But because I see a good setup on a daily and one hour, and M5, I decided to take a trade. And if always, when I take a trade, if the market reverses, I know when exactly to exit my trade. In this case, I was going to exit when it breaks this inside bar. There was an inside, like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 inside bars, and on the 8th bar, it broke was the major direction and that's why I took the buy so that means if the market breaks the inside here then the momentum is now gone the bullish momentum is now gone on M5 so that means it's either consolidate for a while or it start to go down after this so that's why in this trade breakout of the inside was one of my exit validations here. Okay. So, with that in mind, I took the trade buy. 
And again, this was my stop loss. 104.167 was my stop loss placement. I took 32 pips of profit, sorry, stop loss. So here is my buy. And this was my stop loss. And this is my potential exit timing. This is my potential exit timing. You see? So that's why I don't always exit at the stop loss. Stop loss is like seatbelt for me on the highway. And this is my worst case scenario. Whenever some big news happens out of nowhere, then the market might spike down all the way. And this is where I exit my trade with 2% drawdown. But usually my exit timing is between uh, position and the stop loss. So that's how I plan my trades every time I enter trades. Okay, so then what happened was, this is a screenshot from my mobile MT5, but then here's what, here's my buy, and uh, this was my stop loss. And um, the market went down very fast after this. So I have been monitoring until it breaks here 104.33 as planned. Because again, there was an inside, so if the market breaks there, I was going to exit my trade. So this particular trade was done based on the price action for entry and exit confirmations. But then, after this, the market went down. And not only that, not only that, it broke the inside bearish here on these candles. And also there was an end wave, reverse end wave against my direction. So when I monitored, when I monitored the chart, I was waiting for the market to bounce here. It actually went, it actually bounced once. So I was waiting for the market to go up on any wave towards the major direction, but it didn't happen. The market went down against my direction. So that was my right exit timing over here. So that's how I took the loss of 17 pips times 2 on my trade. So again, I don't keep holding the trade until the price hit the stop loss, unless there is a big news or unless there is a big drawdown or spikes. Usually I keep holding the trade until I monitor and confirm the right exit timing. Again, in this case, which, of, which was around here. This inside of a breakout means that so this is a 5 minute time frame, and uh, the bars are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 bars. So that means within the 35 minutes, the market has been consolidating, and within the 35 minutes, there were buyers and sellers within here. And buyers and sellers fighting and fighting for 35 minutes, and then eventually buyers won the market. Right? Buyers won the market and sellers lost the market within the inside. So that means buyers are winning the trades and they are happy, but all of a sudden sellers came in, the market went down. And the psychology of the buyers is that they are holding the buy and most likely they are putting the stop losses below the inside. So here I can tell that the stop losses are accumulated because of this inside, and buyers has won the trade. So that means if the market breaks here, 104.339, that means buyers are giving up. Buyers within the inside for 35 minutes are giving up. So that means if buyers giving up and sellers dominates the market, most likely it goes down, right? So that's the logic behind. And that's why I exit here at the right timing. If you know about the candlesticks and also what's happening between the buyers and sellers and what they're thinking in terms of psychology, then you know when to exit your trade. So that's how I plan my exit timing with a loss in this case.
So my stop loss was down here. This was my stop loss and this was my position to buy. But this is, I think, a bit advanced or a bit confusing, especially if you're new to trading and if you're new to these strategies, entries and exits, it might be confusing. But uh, yeah, this is how I trade. This is how I developed, developed my own strategy like this way. Yeah, sometimes I take three positions and follow three different time frames to trail the profits. So that was my trade, or for the loss, cat JPY. Okay, and time is now almost uh, over, so let me tell you one thing that is important whenever you look at look back your trades. So every month I look back my trades and I do analyze my own trades and find the patterns of winning and losing trades. And here you can see that um, in the month of June, out of nine trades, you see the first three trades. For the three trades, CAT JPY and AD JPY times two, I took all the JPY pairs between the 5th and the 9th of June, but I was not winning the trades. I was not winning the trades. Loss and loss and break even. Right? So, and then, I took another trade on the pound pairs. I started to trade on the pound pairs from the 9th of June until the 17th. So then I start to win trades. You see win and win, break even and win. So you see the patterns is really different. So that means JPI pairs, especially in the first half, first, uh, first two weeks, of uh, the month of June, JPI pairs were very tricky. This is something I can tell based on my own stats. So that means in the month of July, in the first week and second week of the month, JPI pairs may be also tricky. This is a pattern recognition among the markets every month. So that's one. And also, um, Again, on the 9th to 17th, I took nice profits on the pound pairs. Euro pound, pound USD times 2, and pound JPY. And so, uh, pound pairs may be active in the month of July also. I can tell based on this pattern with my strategy. And then towards the end of June, I took two trades on AUDs, AUD USD and AUD CAD. I took two trades, four positions, and the result was loss and win. But win was very small, seven, only 7 or 8 pips. So there was not, not a big trend. So that's one of the patterns I can tell. So like this, in some months, you notice that you only trade JPI pairs. Or in some months, you only trade, trade USD pairs or pound pairs. But this is important to uh, look at these patterns based on your strategy so that you can expect what, may, what patterns may come on the next month also. Of course, it may be different, and um, if it's different, then simply you create the new patterns and trade on these patterns every month. So that's one of the things I think that's important whenever you journal your trades. And also, I do look at the time of my trades. So here, uh, in the month of June, if you look at my times of trading, so I do screen charts three times to five times per, per day. When I wake up in the morning, it's an Asian session, and lunchtime would be uh, going to the London session, and then uh, an evening is the New York session. So basically, I monitor chart three times in all the sessions every day, but the pattern shows that my trades were done between 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. UTC time zone. You see? So I never took any trades before 7, or there was a one 6, 6.25 or 4, but I didn't take any trades after 12.35 UTC. 
oh, sorry, after 1240 UTC. I took 1240 UTC, but I never took any trades after this time. Right, so that means we see, we tend to see some uh, trends before 1240 UTC time zone in the month of June. And that was my pattern. So that means in the month of July, we may see the same pattern. And with that in mind, I monitor chart on all the sessions anyways. And then if I find that pattern again in the month of July, then I keep that in mind and trade in the month of August and September and on and on like this. So this is also important to uh, you know see the patterns of your uh, pairs to trade, your winning pairs and losing pairs, and also time whenever you take trades. And this should be different among everyone because everyone are in different time zones and different setups and different pairs may watch, different markets are watching, or different strategies, indicators are using. But there has to be some patterns in your analysis and trades. And this is the power of journaling your trades. Again, if you only focus on the winning trades and losing trades, then you won't be able to see the patterns. But uh, if you know the patterns of your winning trades and losing trades, then you know what to be careful and uh, you know when you can be more confident on your trades when you take them on the next month. So that's basically what I look at and that's why I journal my trades basically. Okay, so uh, yeah, I hope you get this idea. Again, this is also a bit complex maybe if you're new to trading, but uh, we have sometimes, uh, um, how do you say, like uh, trading is all about psychology and uh, to avoid psychological struggles or psychological challenges, you have to start to focus on the numbers. Again, focus on, don't focus on how much you win, how much you lose. So here, this column, don't focus because it depends on how much you have. But and this is not universal. This number is not universal, so don't focus. But focus on the ratio numbers, like win rate, profit factor, and drawdown percentage, and also R multiple. And then also the patterns of your winning trades and losing trades in terms of the pairs, the markets, and the time. If you track this record every month, then I'm sure you will have less emotion because you see the patterns and you can kind of expect what may happen if you trade next time. So sometimes that's why I, I, pass, I pass the entry opportunities. I don't take entries every time I see the confirmations. Sometimes I skip. Because if the pattern is not right, then I skip. Or if I if I can kind of sense something wrong, of something wrong with the five minute or Ichimoku situations, then I don't take trades. I just let it go and look for the new waves on the ocean to come. So that's how I approach my trades. So. Yeah, so that was my performance in the month of June. So let's see, in the month of July, looks like the markets are a bit uh, quiet on the first week of the July. But uh, let's see what's going to happen uh, towards the end, mid and end of July. Usually July, the month of July is quiet. July, August, usually quiet in Forex markets. But uh, we will see. They may, be, they may be active and you may see some new trends um, next week or in the month of July. So we will see. Okay. Okay, so uh, I do see many comments and questions, but I'm sorry I have to go. 
So um, I have to finish the live stream today. But uh, thank you very much for joining. After I finish the live, and come back to the comment and enjoy your comments here. So uh, yeah, I hope you have a great weekend. And tomorrow I will be doing the weekly forecast. I do cover the forex pairs and gold, WTI and indices and Bitcoin in the news for upcoming week. So hope to see you there and uh, hope you have a great, great day and weekend. Okay, so to those who are Ichimoku members, I will see you soon in about a few minutes. Again, thank you very much. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay gold. Bye for now. Matane, thank you.